They came from 10 states along with some international visitors to participate in the 23rd annual Georgia Peanut Tour. And for the most part, they are affiliated with peanuts in various fashions, but never have had the opportunity to see the peanut production infrastructure, including production practices, quality management, peanut shelling, and more firsthand. So it was an opportunity for them to see what goes on with peanuts as they go from the farm to the factory. Stops included visits in Coffee, Jeff Davis, Applin, Telfair, Ben Hill, Irwin, Tiff, and Worth counties. We planted this crop. Uh, it was so wet back when planting season began. And we couldn't get in the field. We finally got it in the field around the 10th of June or so, and so they're approximately 100 days old. So uh, we, we're, we, we're a, a ways away from harvesting yet. I, we've got, uh, I think it's 10 varieties here now. We've got, uh, I can't name them, they're too numerous to name, but I think there's 10 varieties. Uh, not much insect pressure, but seeing a little bit of a, a, a tomato spot wilt virus in some varieties. Uh, some of the varieties that used to show pretty good resistance now, it looks like it's, it's losing its resistance. Yeah. This field right here is our peanut variety test. We're very fortunate Back when I started as county agent in the early 80s, we had two varieties for 20, 25 years. That was Flow Runner and GK7. We've got tremendous breeding programs at the University of Georgia and the University of Florida. We've got 10 varieties here. We're very excited about every one of them. Uh, Georgia Green has been the standard for years. And of course, we compare these varieties to Georgia Green. They got a lot of disease resistance, high yield potential, and some of the varieties are high oleic. Well, this year we got about 8,000 acres over in Atkinson County, but it's down probably a fourth to a third, and the crop is late. We've been hole scraping this week, but normally we start on Labor Day, so we're two to three weeks behind. I checked some in Osceola that hadn't had any rain. They look weak, but that's just sort of an unusual spot in the, in the, in the state. But uh, in our county and coffee, they look pretty good. They're just late. We just hope we have a good growing season to finish them on out and uh, I was going to point out if you look here you'll see the differences in some of these varieties in color but that doesn't affect them it's not inoculum that's just the variety colors but last year it was really stood out with AP3 and me and Eddie do a lot of work together and, and work closely with the growers and it's, uh, like I say there's four actually newer varieties out here and we're really excited about them compared to some of the other newer varieties. Uh, what we hoped to learn was kind of get a good understanding of the process, you know, what's happening out in the fields. From our standpoint, we get a product in our facility which has already been cleaned, shelled, and it's good to understand you know, what happens behind prior to that, to that product coming into us, you know, understanding what's happening out in the fields, the dedication that there is with the varieties and understanding how the, the, the farmers are really involved with, you know, improving their quality of their product, and, and then that affects us, you know, we get a better quality product into us. We're looking fairly decent right now we had what we thought was an outstanding looking crop up until a couple of weeks ago and we've we've had a little patch of dry weather and I'm sure if you talk to most any producer around the state of Georgia you'll find some that will complain about not having enough rain even though we've had a, a good rainfall uh, pattern this year but I think we're still in pretty good shape considering we're now pushing close or just have started harvest and still have a long way to go though. Well the latest numbers uh, John you know USDA is predicting a 3,500 per acre average yield but I'm interested in the Beasley projection. <laughs> the Beasley projection is not that high I can guarantee you. I don't know I was fooled last year we thought we were going to make a 3,000 pound crop maybe 2,800 pound crop and we came in with our second highest ever at 3,400 pounds per acre so uh, certainly I'm not that good at guessing or judging but I think that because of some of the issues we've been dealing with here lately, the heavy white mold pressure, some of the weed, pig weed pressure and the weeds uh, problems we've had, some of the insect problems, and especially the dry weather here uh, lately, I think that the yield projection is a little high, but we've certainly got a long way to go. Some things could happen over the next six weeks that could make a big difference. Well, you know, Dr. Beasley, we've really got some good cultivars working for us right now. We've seen a lot of shifting to some of these new cultivars. Do you see that taking place across the belt? Absolutely. There's been a huge shift in cultivars this year. Last year we were still probably pushing 50% of the acres being planted to Georgia Green. This year is probably well below 20%. Now that we have adequate seed supply of some of the new cultivars, particularly the Georgia 6G, 
the Florida 07 and the TIF guard cultivars, they are now accounting for a much higher percentage of the acreage. We will see that shift continue in 2010 as the seed acreage plant or the acreage planted in 09 for seed production for 2010 shows that we're probably down around five to seven percent of the acreage planted for Georgia Green and about 80 percent or more planted for the three cultivars I mentioned plus some Georgia 7W and Georgia Greener. So we're seeing the shift in cultivars and they have in their genetics much better resistance to tomato spotted wilt virus. Well this tour is conducted by the Georgia Peanut Commission and the University of Georgia Extension Peanut Specialists and others in an effort to educate these tour participants on various facets of the industry. And the highlight always, of course, is seeing peanuts actually being grown out here, including digging and harvesting operations in Irwin County, for example. Well, of course, you can't have a tour like this without some time out for refreshment. And it was a unique treat for many at Morris Ag Services in Irwin County. Armin Morris, chairman of the Georgia Peanut Commission, he was boiling up peanuts, and they were grilling peanut butter and jelly sandwiches prepared by the National Peanut Buying Points and the Peanut Institute. Of course, some have never had much of either one of those, but looking at them, they seem to enjoy both very well. In fact, went back for seconds and thirds. Peanut farming has changed, so you've got peanut farmers that are involved. Uh, with, with most of the buying points and a lot of the shelling organizations today and it's great that we have these co-op shellings uh, operations because that helps to encourage the uh, commercial buyers that don't have or not farmer owned to it helps to hold the price of the peanuts up because of the farmer owned co-ops. So Every peanut in America must go through a buying point for testing. So there's not any peanuts that are not tested except maybe these arm and boiled right direct this morning for your consumption, but we have to test them and the uh, grading service with the Federal State Inspection Service will inspect these peanuts and give us a grade and at that point we'll pay the farmer by grade on how much he has produced. The thing we do is uh, we work with the Peanut Institute as a partner. Uh, they are the ones that do all the research for our nutrition and we take this to the field every year to all the various festivals across the state and we grill sandwiches at every place we go. So we uh, use a lot of peanut butter and a lot of jelly. Well, this was a trip these people will long remember, and they'll go back home with a first-class education of what it takes at the ground level to get peanuts from the farm to the factory. I'm Jimmy Lee reporting for the Georgia Peanut Commission.